Heyo people! It's finally time to really dig into the Grenadier rework now that we have its final form on our server. Unlike Guardian, a lot of the skills have the same name or icon despite the changes to the animation or effects. Anyway, let's get into it. First up, Cannon Salvo old version is gone. The new Cannon Salvo has a higher damage output and will buff your physical skills by 15% for 10 seconds after use if you're a Grenadier main. Gaze upon the old plasma cannon for the last time, and here's the new one. It also had a slight bump to its damage output, but now has no travel time for the first hit, and will debuff targets with a crit rate and crit damage received plus 10%. In this footage, you can see that I'm on the lightning bounce path, so you can see it bounce between targets. Check out the old fiery grenade! It has been replaced by sacrificial bomb. This new skill is a gap closer that hits an AoE around the target when you land. It cannot be used while jump casting. Each target caught in the blast will increase your physical damage by 5% up to 25% with 5 targets. If you're a Grenadier main, it will also buff your magnetic optical strafe skills next use by increasing its damage dealt, crit rate, and AoE by 8 meters. And you'll see how nice that is later. Here's the old icy grenade, and now here's the new one. It's got more damage and will increase your ice skill damage by 15% for 10 seconds, which seems like an odd choice as you don't have any other ice skills. And feast your eyes upon Magnetic Optical Strafe. From here on out, MOS. This technically replaces the machine gun turret that got folded into the mechanical assembly skill with the healing crystal, but it's basically a new skill in its own right. It's a giant AoE that reduces the target's move speed. The base AoE is 12 meters around you, and it can be used without a target. In this footage, I'm using plus 2 meters mastery and plus 3 meters from my envoy. But if you think about how you can increase it by 8 more by using Sacrificial Bomb, you start to get a picture of just how massive the AoE for this skill can become. Next, here's Meteor Cannon's old version. With MOS taking the role of the non-target AoE skill, the new Meteor Cannon is a more standard, small AoE targeted skill. It's got more damage than before and a lower cooldown, and debuffs the target with a nice 10% more damage taken debuff. Your old skills for turret and healing crystal have been combined into one, Mechanical Assembly. When you're using the lightning bounce path, a tap or partial charge will get you a machine gun turret. And summoning one will buff your damage versus flame, ice, and lightning targets by 25%. Also, the turrets now follow you. I like how they hop. Anyway, each of the turrets has their damage output buffed between 90 to 110%. As for the crystals, you can spawn them by instead holding the mechanical assembly to full charge. They have less of an AoE than before, but they've been buffed in other ways. The green Sanctifying Crystal's healing has been beefed up, and it will also remove debuffs faster, one every 5 seconds. The red Growth Crystal will give you more of a damage buff and crit buff, and its zeal rate is doubled. The yellow Light Shield Crystal has a higher defense and evasion buff than before as well. Oh yes, and of course they follow you too. The class buff Suppressing Fire has a new animation and offers the same old flat crit buff, but now mains will get an additional 10% crit rate and 10% more crit damage when they use the buff. And now we're into the mastery paths. First up, my preferred path, the lightning bounce. Phase Shift Laser has the same name as before, but this one did get a new icon. It's now a chargeable lightning laser that has a 3 meter wide AoE. Plasma Cannon gains its bounce effect on this path, and also gains a lightning damage taken debuff for targets it hits. This will get stronger as you level up the mastery path, up to 15% at level 60. Meteor Cannon will gain the effect of increasing the target's received physical damage, up to 20% when you get to level 60, and Ice Grenade also gets a new effect, starting from level 30 mastery. Not only will its damage output increase, it will reduce the target's speed. That's not move speed, that's skill cooldown speed. At level 60 mastery, Phase Shift's laser's new effect is buffs to its power when half or fully charged, along with 15 or 30% damage taken and move speed debuff for the targets, again, based on whether or not you half or fully charge the skill. And finally, the old mastery effect of increasing cast range at level 60 mastery has been removed, replaced with new personal received crit rate reduction, up to 15% at level 60, and a brand new 30% crit damage buff that only activates at level 60. The 12% damage increase was there before, but I'll mention it's still there, just to make sure you know it is. And now we're on to the right path, the destroyer path. First off, let's summon that destroyer, shall we? 
looks the same as before, no changes here. Uh, but this bad boy has 150% of all your stats now, instead of the measly 25% of your damage and 40% of your HP that the old model had. This beefy bot now also applies a debuff to nearby enemies that increases damage taken from Grenadier skills by 30%. Moving along, Mechanical Assembly will now spawn both a turret and a crystal when used, no charge necessary, and the crystal will generate a field increasing damage of Grenadier skills and crit damage of all nearby friendlies, stacking up to three times. Our massive AoE MOS gets damage output buffed up, and also will debuff surrounding targets with a nice damage from Grin Skills Plus effect. Uh, Sacrificial Bomb also gets some more damage output as you level, and will increase the target's damage taken from physical skills and elemental skills by up to 10% by level 60 mastery. And, same as the lightning side, you get some simple buffs just for leveling up the mastery path. The new ones are HP boost up to 15% and damage taken reduced by 16%. This reduction is a little special, up till 60. It's only a chance to reduce damage. At 60, it becomes a flat reduction. And once you get to 60, your beefy bot gets even beefier with it inheriting 300% of your stats. It will also generate a protection field around itself that increases nearby friendlies evasion by 5%, physical and elemental resistance by 10%, and crit damage taken by 15% in a 20 meter radius. And not to mention, it will finally unlock that mysterious bonus skill for you. Say hello to Ultimate Destruction. This is a new physical skill for you to use only when you have the Heavy Destroyer summoned. The skill will increase the target's received dot damage, debuff all their stats aside from HP, both of which stack to 3 and 2 times respectively, plus a nice little toughness debuff, and that refers to the pen shield if you're not familiar with the term. A special note for this skill is that whenever your destroyer is despawned, like it will be every time you change map, the skill will be removed from your skill bar. However, if you leave an empty spot for it on the skill bar, it will show up again in the first available empty slot when you resummon your destroyer. And so, same with Guardian, from here on out we're just going to check out the changes to the special Envoy nodes, so if all you wanted to see was the new skills, you're done here. A special note here, on the Taiwan server, they did in fact rename all the nodes, but they decided to keep the old names for us. Let's start with the base Envoy. We got 15% boss damage added. This used to only be on the melee classes, so I'm glad they're adding it everywhere. The turrets inheriting 50% of your damage has been changed to them inheriting 10% of all of your stats, and the stacking buff has been adjusted. Instead of 3% damage and 1% pen stacking 10 times, it's now 15% damage and 5 pen stacking only twice. So, same amount total, but done stacking in one fifth of the time. Jacketed Hollow Point has been changed from a debuff to another stackable buff, cannon weapon damage and crit damage. Chemistry in Action used to just be a cast range buff, but now it also has an increase to the AoE of your attacks, and on top of that, it also has a stacking buff for damage of Grin skills. These two nodes are side by side on your Envoy, and you probably don't want to skip them. Aim Assist has had the damage versus boss monsters removed, since that's now on your center node, and instead it adds a debuff that increases your target's received crit rate on hit. Man vs. Wild keeps the same damage to HP buff, but adds a chance to reduce your attacker's accuracy by 20% when hit. This kind of feels like a PvP node, so it may be a pass if you're only playing PvE, but if you find that you could really use that HP to survive, it's not a terrible envoy to use while you're still building up your equipment. Just don't expect to see a significant drop in enemies hitting you in dungeons. The Electromagnetism node used to only buff lightning skills crit rate, but now it also increases your lightning skill damage. As for the plasma cannon buff part, it now has a higher chance to proc, and on proc does 30% damage instead of 15. And according to my secret notes, the immobilization effect on that proc ignores immobilization immunity. Which is interesting. I haven't been able to test that one, but... interesting. Uh, Precision Mortar's buff is simple. It used to only trigger 20% of the time, and now it does 100% of the time. And that, my dear friends, is the Grenadier rework for you. Some people have been asking about other classes getting this treatment, and I am happy to confirm that over on the Taiwan server, Warbo and Lancer have received their reworks. I held off on doing these videos for Gren and Guardian until I was able to get actual footage of them in action, but I suppose if you are interested, I can give a shorter overview of what to expect from those two classes once we get the reworks. Uh, but again, I will not have any footage of them, and we probably won't see them on our server for a year? Probably about a year. Uh, let me know if you want to hear that about that in the comments. As usual, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.